This is the story of Jamie Wheeler. Jamie was selected by the Hermosa Company as a modern day hero. Raised on a dairy farm, she's always had a strong work ethic. Early on, she realized that fetal echocardiography, I think I said it right this time, was her passion and especially working with women with high risk pregnancies. She knew she had to take the risk during the pandemic to continue to work so she could utilize her sonographic skills to ensure healthy deliveries. She must go to work because babies in utero can't be put on hold. So Jamie, we salute you as a modern day hero. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me on here and being for me to be able to share my story. Well, Jamie, we're so happy you could join us on Coping in Crisis. Now, you discovered in high school that this field was your passion. What brought you to that conclusion? So growing up, I always had a fascination with fields that involved science and more so biology. So the medical field, as I was getting older, was always something that I was drawn to. And it wasn't until I was in high school, uh, I had a family friend who was also a sonographer and she made the offer of me being able to shadow her one day at work. Um, and so I decided to kind of get a glimpse of what this career entailed. And I remember the first patient that we saw that day who was a pregnant woman who came in for a routine ultrasound and just being in complete, just that feeling of being in complete awe um, and having just this very passionate um, feeling of being able to witness this ultrasound, this unborn baby, um, being able to see all the different anatomical structures, specifically the heart, and just seeing in how much detail, getting a, getting a glimpse into all that we could see. And I just remember leaving that day and feeling just this burning passion for this is what I want to do. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. And you're 30, about 30, in your early 30s? Yes, I'm 32. I'll be 33 in June. So you've been doing this for, what, about 10 years? Yep, 10 years in June. And you still love it? I do. That's great. It's so much more fun to go to work and love what you do. Yes. So, and, you know, just tell me a little bit about this because I don't know much about it. Do all pregnant women need this scan? So all pregnant women do require, when they come to our office, we do um, perform the same exact exam on, on all women, whether or not they're at a much higher risk in their pregnancy or, you know, if they're at a little lower risk. Um, so they get a detailed ultrasound no matter what. Now with fetal echocardiograms, that's not something that we do on all patients. Um, so the fetal echocardiograms are usually only done with certain indications. Uh, for example, if mom has a medical condition like diabetes, or if it, she's had a previous pregnancy where the child had a heart defect. So we use that as kind of a, a screening tool to make sure that this baby also doesn't have a heart defect. Um, another reason why we might do a fetal echocardiogram is in a previous ultrasound, if we detected one ourselves, then it's something that we always follow up with once the baby gets a little bit older, uh, because usually the best time to look at baby's heart is any time between about 22 and 24 weeks. So that's kind of that, the sweet spot, um, if you will, of being able to see the heart in, in the best way um, when the heart's a little bit bigger. And so that kind of allows us to, to monitor baby's heart at that point. That's interesting. 
you probably had some scary times, have you? I have, definitely. Can you think of some, so we have a better understanding really of what you do. What were some of the scariest times you had? Um, so I would say one of the scariest times, and this unfortunately was within my first year of doing ultrasound. And I had a patient that she was pregnant with twins and she was about a month out from delivering. And so, so this situation is kind of a combination of scary and just emotionally difficult. Um, scary because as a sonographer, you're put in a very tricky situation when dealing with patients and especially when there's something that we come across that's abnormal. So it's a very tricky situation because we're not at liberty to talk with the patient and make to tell them the diagnosis of what it is that we may see. So we have to be very careful um, of what we're allowed to say and what we're not. Um, but in this certain situation, I, this, this patient was, like I said, about a month out from delivery. And it's a patient that we had been following because she was pregnant with twins. And the one of the babies had passed away in the womb and she had no idea. And so that was one of the hardest situations. And like I said, I was, you know, new to more new to the whole scene of beginning my ultrasound career. And so being put in this position of trying to figure out how I was going to proceed throughout the exam by doing the things that I, that I needed to do, getting the images that I needed to get for the doctor um, and just navigating throughout that entire exam without being able to tell anything to the mother. You know, my face gives me away a good part of the time. It would be so hard to keep that poker face. You know, when you're seeing something like this and not to go, oh, you know, or make a, a face or have some kind of expression. And obviously you just can't. The doctor's the one to tell, right? Yes. yes. Well, it's scary. It, it really is. And it's, it's, that's a, an aspect of my job that never gets any easier. And I would say would be the least favorite part of my job. So you've been working long hours in really tight quarters to scan and diagnose or monitor any problem in pregnant women. What's this been like during the pandemic? So it has definitely been nerve wracking um, because the, as I'm doing the exams, um, the, the physical distance between my patients and I are even we're less than a foot apart because as I'm sitting in my chair and where the patient's laying on the bed, we, for the majority of the exams that I do, we're physically touching. Um, and so and also the majority of the ultrasound exam time that I'm actually in the room with the patient is at the least about an hour, if some, sometimes up to two hours because they can be very lengthy exams. So it's, it's something that in, in knowing what those circumstances are you know that I need to be in in order to do my job and do it effectively is just trying our trying our best and trying my best um, to take all the precautions that I can to not only protect the, the patient but protect myself as well. What's your biggest worry or fear during this pandemic? Um, I would say my biggest worry is probably just the fact that this is so unknown of, you know, finding a solution for this virus and not knowing when that solution is going to happen. The other biggest thing that's been a, a fear of mine is 
seeing how this virus can manifest so differently from person to person, you know, where you could have somebody that's showing all the symptoms to somebody that is completely asymptomatic, showing nothing at all. So you have to treat every case like there's a potential risk. And you don't have a lot of people doing your job in the office, do you? Correct. So as of right now, I'm the only sonographer at the clinic. Um, And so that's what makes this situation a little more tricky is that I'm the, the one the one and only sonographer that is seeing all the patients that that come through our clinic. What advice would you give pregnant women today? I would give them the advice of making sure that they take all of the utmost care and precaution in protecting themselves by, by wearing you know, in the midst of this virus of wearing the proper, you know, safe equipment, whether it's gloves or masks, and to help to let them be in a situation that would avoid putting them at an increased risk to contract the virus. Um, To just make sure that they're putting their health and the health of their baby as their top priority and doing everything that they can to make sure that they're minimizing that risk. You see other health care workers around you all the time, don't you? I mean, you work with a lot of people that have yes. the protective gear and do all those things. Um, what would you say to health workers today? So, First and foremost, I would want to say thank you to them, um, to my fellow healthcare workers um, that in, in the midst of what's happening in our world and while we're being ordered to, while the rest of the world is being ordered to stay at home and stay safe, um, that it's that they're able to step up and put themselves in the front lines of taking care of the most vulnerable, vulnerable people, um, in our, in our society. So I would just, I would want to thank them for that, that selflessness of showing up to work every day. Um, and, and you can probably tell they're scared too, aren't they? Oh yes. Especially, you know, healthcare workers that have families at home and small children and have that fear of passing that to their loved ones when they go home. That would be very frightening, very frightening. Well, I am so glad you've been able to follow your passion. You know, we will get through this, as we've said before, and go on to the other side. But thanks to people like you, that say, well, I'm sorry, but I can't stay home. I've got babies to take care of, even though they're not born yet. You know, it's my job to see that they get born as healthy as they possibly can. And they have you to thank for that. So thank you so much. And congratulations on becoming a modern day hero. Well, thank you, Nan. I I appreciate it so much. It means more than you know.